so here it is Monday morning. I was out here Sunday night uh, doing some priming and getting everything ready to go for Monday morning in order to block sand this thing because I want to block sand it and then prime it and then I'll block sand it again and then I'll prime it and then I'll wet block it with 400 and do the door jams and everything and then seal it get ready for paint. Now, so you guys can see, they got this stuff right here, okay? I don't know if you guys see that or not right there, okay? So that's a guide coat and I gotta tell you, you know, we used to take like a, like paint, like black paint, mist it over, you know, the primer, you know, and then start blocking. But I gotta tell you, I really like that stuff because it does not gum up the paper at all. So I can just smear it all on and then it even washes right off. I don't have to worry about it. And <clears throat> this way you can see where you have sand or where you haven't. And if you sand it enough, did you get out any scratches that are underneath the primer? Did you blend them in? You know, you can kind of get an idea. Now, I'm going to go over this with 150. I'll block this all out with 150. I'll prime it. <clears throat> then I'll block it again with 150. And uh, some people go to 220 on their second block. Uh, but I got such a good primer, I'm really not worried about it. So I'll go ahead and I'll prime this again. Uh and we'll block this twice with 150. And then we will go ahead and put another light coat of primer on it. Wet block everything with 400. And now when I do wet block with 400 before paint, I use Dawn Dish Soap in the water. And the reason why I do that is I was taught a long time ago that you're going to use water anyway. Put some dish soap in it. So if there's any oil or grease or deposits or anything, maybe even from your hand, you went and had the you know, a greasy ass lunch somewhere and you just came back and started touching the truck. You know, this will help, you know, prevent fish eye and help, you know, keep the truck fairly clean. So use Dawn dish soap if you're gonna wet block. Um, you don't use Dawn dish soap, I learned this, when you're wet blocking the clear coat, don't use the dish soap because it helps prevent it from cutting, uh, believe it or not. I ended up finding out that some people told me and, and it makes sense because I tried it that when you use Dawn dish soap, it glides over the clear. It doesn't really cut into the clear when you're sanding it. So only use the dish soap when you're cutting into the primer. The primer's soft anyway, and it helps keep everything clean. Um, so now a lot of other people, uh, when they get done to the point they're dry blocking this and then they wet block the whole thing, you know me, I'm usually not in a hurry. So I will take this truck outside and I will pressure wash the whole thing from top to bottom with soapy water and I will blow out everything and clean everything. I'll bring it back inside, I'll blow it off, I'll turn on a fan and I'll just let it air dry all night long and then I'll come out here the next day, I'll start taping it off and get ready for paint. You know, when we do the video, we'll go ahead and we'll show you exactly what it is I'm doing. The reason why I wash vehicles uh, is just, you know what? Uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of people, you know, they make no sense. They come up to me and they go, man, you can't get primer wet. Do you just wet block the whole thing? What's the difference? I mean, so you got to understand, you know, uh, you know, like I've said before, this is not rocket science. Okay, guys. I mean, this is not as difficult as people need to make it seem. And like I told you a thousand times, I'm just telling you, this is how I do it. You go do it your way. It doesn't really matter. I'm just telling you that this is the steps that I do, okay? So here we are now. I got a whole day of wet, or I mean a dry blocking with 150 uh, on all of this. And I'm gonna also show you something else why I got you here. So this was taught to me by my buddy Oscar who lives in Mexico and my brother that, you know, when you're sanding on a hood like this, Okay, you know, you see how, you know, see how it pushes? Well, if you push too hard, what ends up happening, you just start doing this and you're really not making it straight. When you're sanding a hood, you don't want to press. You just kind of glide it along and you just kind of block sand nice and easy. You know, you, you're, if you start pushing, you see, you, you're really not, you're just, you know, you're digging in. So you just got to take your time 
and just do it by hand, nice and easy. Don't push real hard. And believe it or not, it's going to take forever, but it will be so much straighter and it'll look so nice. You have to sand it anyway, so you might as well make it look nice, right? And the same goes for, you know, some of the door panels and stuff. You know, you get into a center of a door. See that? See that? So you don't want to be pushing to where it's doing that. So you just want to lightly block that. And that's just the way the body panels are. Especially if you get a cheap panel and, uh, <laughs> you know, like the passenger side fender in here is an aftermarket fender. I won't even touch it. I, I'm not even going to do it. So when you get a good panel, they don't tin can so much. So I ended up getting a Fender here. Uh, this is an original Dodge Fender. I actually got it from my buddy Tom Studebaker. Yes, his last name Studebaker. If you ever watched the Studebaker episode, it's the owner's son. He's uh, actually found out he's big into these old Dodge trucks, so all this first-gen stuff. So uh, he was able to hook me up with a Fender from down south. Uh, he took really good care of me. I got it all fixed up and some dings and dents. And, you know, it was such a nice fender. It's going to go good on my truck. But, uh, you know, having connections in the gearhead world really helps. So stay tuned. We'll talk to you when we get this thing uh, painted. Um, I'm going to, when I do the last primer before I wet block, I'm actually just going to let the primer sit for three, four days, let it shrink up and let it do its thing, and then I'll wet block and paint. So we'll see you guys later.